it is time to review the Lions and Broncos Week 16 game, a.k.a. the Mile High Tank Bowl. So two teams try playing for a better draft pick, the object to lose the game. So this game, it actually had a pretty packed stadium for a tank bowl. Because usually tank bowls take place in stadiums that are almost fucking empty. But this one actually had a pretty good crowd in it, even as some Lions fans present. Some Lions fans, of course, waving the sell the team banner. Give it up, folks. Martha Ford already said she's not selling the team anytime soon. Give it up. Like, the only way the, the Fords would possibly even sell the Lions is if Martha Ford passed away, which probably won't be for a long time. Odds are, I think Martha's living till she's over 100. Currently, she is 95. Anyway, back to the game at hand. So, this game started off as a sloppy offensive game. In the first quarter, punts were a plenty, other than a Matt Prater field goal and Jamal Agnew returning a kickoff for a touchdown. Hmm. Um, I mean, I kick off a punt for a touchdown. Hmm. Did, did, there goes Moby tweet anything about Jamal Agnew being trash again. If he did, then that, then I might explain why Jamal Agnew got that punt return for a touchdown. Because remember, back in week three on that kick return for a touchdown for 100 yards, there goes Moby sent a tweet out before the game calling Jamal Agnew trash and that he needs to be cut. And then Jamal responded to Moby by telling him to shut the fuck up and to sit his dumb ass down. Hey. Hey. If, hey, if you can light a fu fire under your ass, do it. It seemed it worked. So then after one quarter, it seemed like the Lions' perfectly constructed tank was falling apart. Up 10 to nothing early in the game. The Broncos were responding the second half and cut that lead down to 10 to 10-10, into a tie at halftime. The Lions' offense played sloppy. The Lions' defense played meh. They weren't good, but they weren't 100% terrible. The Lions were also dealt another blow in the game, as Halani Tavai has suffered an injury. Damn it. Like, god damn it. Halani Tavai was having a really good season, too. Fuck. And he really needs that development to become a fucking elite beast. Honestly, I'd say rest him. He does not need to prove anything more this year. He's had a really good rookie season. He proved everything he needed to this year. Hawani has proved he is definitely worth being picked in the second round. Nuff said. But, meanwhile, there was one questionable coaching decision. Why the fuck was Carrion Johnson taken off the IR and brought into this game? Why isn't he off the field trying to get 100%? Why is he back in this game? He literally has nothing to play for, other than pride. Tell you what, folks, take money and pride out of the equation. What does he have to play for? I'm waiting. Anyone? Nothing, exactly. He has nothing to play for. He should just stay off and get rested and healed up. And of course, the big decision announced earlier this week that Matt Patricia and Bob Quinn will also be back in Detroit for another season. So both of them will get to spend their Christmases here at home. Honestly, good. They weren't the problem this year. Like, what the hell are you supposed to do with 21 players on IR? It's probably be going to be 22 because they're probably going to put Hawani Tavai on the IR. Like seriously, what are you supposed to do when over when almost half your team is injured and you're forced to play second and third stringers and then some bums off the street? What are you supposed to do then? But yes. And also the Lions have finally done the most honorable thing. They finally put Matthew Stafford on the IR. Almost three or four weeks too late. Should have happened a few weeks ago. But I guess um, Patricia and Bob Quinn wanted to wait until they know their jobs were safe before doing that. But yeah, anyway, continuing on. The Broncos would get the lead early in the third quarter. And then the Lions would charge back down the field. 
Ink with a Kenny go and a touchdown to put him up 17 to 13 in the mid third in late in the third quarter. So then when it looked like the Lions were about to destroy their tank and ruin their shot at possibly getting Chase Young. If Chase Young decides to not go back to Ohio State and declare for the draft. Then the Lions fans recognized that the Lions have once again suffered another fate. The Lions entered the fourth quarter of this game with a lead. Oh no, another fourth quarter lead. Let me explain to you folks the definition of insanity. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again. Expecting a different result. So then when it looked like the Lions tank was about to be destroyed, Drew Law quickly unlocked his true potential. Along with Philip Lindsay running like a beast. The Broncos' sloppy offense was able to put up two unanswered touchdowns, and the Lions have blown their sixth fourth-quarter lead of the season. Six blown fourth-quarter leads? God damn, that's like Cleveland Browns-esque of misery. Like, that misery is almost Cleveland Browns level. Fuck. All I say is that for this retooling to be successful, the Lions need to finish games better. So at the end, the Lions could have no answer for the rest of the game. The Lions fall 27-17. to And now we wait on other results to see where the Lions go in the draft. So the one other tank ball the Lions were monitoring was the Giants and the Deadskins. That game ended up going to overtime when Dwayne Haskins suffered a gruesome knee injury. And then Case Keenum came in and just tried to destroy whatever tank the Deadskins had left. And, and that would force the game to go to overtime tied at 35-all. Daniel Jones was brought in over Eli Manning. Because Pat Schumer is doing everything in his power to try and keep his job with the Giants. He's saving Pat Schumer. You're probably getting fired by the Giants. And Dave Gettleman is probably getting fired too. And they're going to try this rebuild with a different GM and head coach. But in overtime, the Giants charged down the field and got a touchdown. So with that, the Lions now move to fourth in the draft order and the Deadskins move to second. So yes, New York, congratulations. Your dreams of getting Chase Young may have just went out the window. Guess, guess he won't be. At least he still have a shot at Isaiah Simmons or Derek Brown, maybe. Oh well, it is what it is. But there is another tank bowl the Lions were monitoring during this time. The tank bowl between the Bungles and the Miami Dolphins. Miami was doing a really good job of destroying their tank with Fitz Magic. As Miami late at the start of the fourth quarter, Miami had a 23-point lead. Up 35-12. to 12. And then Andy Dolan of the Bengals decided to destroy whatever hope Cincinnati had of a tank. Even though they had two games over the Deadskins. And a Cincinnati loss would guarantee the Bengals the first overall pick. So Danny Dolan would go with it and he'd lead Miami's comeback. I mean, Cincinnati's comeback to tie the game at 35. Sending that game to overtime as well. As Miami has recognized that they are supposed to be tanking. So then in, in overtime, Miami would hit a, a walk-off field goal as the clock expired in overtime. Miami wins the game. So with Miami and the Giants winning, the Lions now move to third in the draft order. Wow. They're now third in the order now. Now only one team remains from Detroit in the second overall pick. For Detroit to get the second overall pick, they need the Washington Redskins to beat the Cowboys next week. And the Cowboys are still fighting for the NFC East title. In a division that somebody has to win. The Lions, they just need to lose to the Packers next week. 
in a stadium in a Ford Field that's probably going that's more than likely going to be dominated by Packer fans. I'm hearing anywhere at Ford Field next Sunday of that the Ford Field's going to be full of 80 to 85 percent Packer fans. So this is essentially going to be another road game in our own stadium. So it's going to be the Cowboys game in Week 11 all over again. Thank God we got one more week of this shit before the playoffs begin. But in all of this, though, with Detroit securing the third pick now, Detroit is now expected to fall no lower than fifth in the draft order. So the Lions have secured at least a top five pick. So now next week, so yep, with all that said and done, we must now pay our respects. And congrats, the 2019 NFL Tank Bowl champions. As with the Bengals losing to the Dolphins, the Cincinnati Bengals have officially locked up the first overall pick. Cincinnati, please step forth and pick up your Joe Burrow. Or a player of your choosing. But yeah, of course the Lions, you know, just more injuries and another de defensive collapse. The story of the season. Defensive collapses, blown leads to plenty. Like the like I said, this team just needs to learn how to finish a goddamn game. Something that has haunted this team all year is being unable to finish games. And it has really shown time and time again. But yeah, one more game to go. And then it's the off season. Honestly, I think the Lions are going to end up third in the draft order. Because I don't see a way the Redskins lose to the, beat the Cowboys. I mean, there's a strong possibility because I've heard Cowboy players may not even show up or on the scoreboard. Because the Cowboys might protest and get Jer may, may get Jason Garrett fired. But odds are, Garrett's probably not going to get fired by the Cowboys. He'll just keep clapping and kissing Jerry Jones' ass, hoping he gets an extension. But we'll have to see what happens next week. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up here for this review of the Mile High Tank Bowl. You know, sloppy offense, sloppy defense, fourth quarter collapse. Same old, same old. And here's an interesting fact for everyone. Um, I think it's been mentioned that out of um now out of now Patricia's 13 of his 21 career losses, in 13 of Patricia's 21 career losses, the Lions have scored 20 points or less in those thir in 13 of those losses. Just thought I'd point that out there for everyone. That there are times where hey, it's not the defense's fault, it's also the offense's fault for not being able to be productive. Of course, most of those losses, most of those losses where they scored, where Lions scored twenty points or less, those numbers went up after Stafford went down with an injury, with the back injury. Just thought I'd point that out there, and hold up, folks, before we wrap this up, we also have heard that the Lions fans have a new excuse on why the Lions have sucked for almost sixty years. I think you'll get a kick out of this excuse. The excuse is the fans. The fans are the reasons why the Lions suck for 60 plus years. That's the reason. That's the excuse we're going with now. It's not Martha Ford anymore. It's now the fans. Oh boy, where do I begin with shutting this argument down? So what everyone is saying is that fans like me are why the Lions suck. Fans like Ace Taker are now why the Lions suck. Fans like Man Beast Morris are the reason why the Lions suck. Let's have a fun with this one. Fans like 313 JMO and 313 Hitman are the reason why the Lions suck. Apparently, fans like Mondo Ray Moore are the reasons why the Lions suck. Fans like Nomish J are now the reason. Fans like Luke G, Micro Mike, Detroit Drew, Gridiron Blitz, Troxel Sports, CA3 Sports Talk, Risky Football Talk. There goes Moby. Apparently, everyone in the Lions YouTube community are the reason why the Lions suck. How about we shut this argument down once and for all? I'ma say it real quick to you folks. 
It is not the fans' fault this team has been a par we run shithole for almost 60 years. What do you think was the main message in trash talk videos I've done on teams like the Browns, the Bears, who else? The Giants, the Cowboys, and maybe, hell, even the Cardinals. What do you think was the main message in those videos? The, the reason they've been, those teams have been shit for a long time has been in combination of either A, shit ownership, B, or B, shit management. And if anyone's wondering, coaching falls under management. Or C, a mix of both. It's very rare you see some teams hit option C. It's just, you know, a lot of teams make bad decisions, whether it be in free agency in the draft, or who they hire in their coaching and management personnel. The fan, Because last I checked, the fans do not own the Lions. They do not own the Lions. Last I checked, the owner was Martha Firestone Ford. Where in that ownership guide does it say owners Martha Firestone Ford and the Detroit Lions fan base? You don't see that last part there. Honestly, I think the fans are just trying to find a new excuse and scapegoat on why the Lions suck. Instead of looking at other reasons why. Like the Lions have made terrible decision management decisions the last couple years. Keep in mind, the Fords were the, thought that hiring Matt Millen was a good idea. Seriously, why the fuck did we hire that bum in the first place? But yeah, just thought I'd point that out to everybody and shut this stupid argument down. The Lions are not the the fans are not the reason why the Lions suck. Get the fuck out of here with that argument. But yeah. But Martha Ford, she did send a letter out. Of course I'll talk more about that letter sometime during the week when I get a chance. Like I'll have some time off because Christmas break is coming up. But yeah. So of course. Martha Ford, though, she said that she wants Patricia, though, to make some changes to his coaching staff and expects this team to be a, quote, playoff contender. It doesn't say playoffs or bust, just a, quote, playoff contender. Doesn't mean playoffs or bust, folks. It means they have to contend for a playoff spot. So the coaching staff changes. I think we all know what this means. I think this means Paul Pasqualoni's gonna get fired. He's gonna be gone. Yep, because Daryl Bevel, he's done really good and good to keep his job. Pasqualoni has not. Yep, pass. It's off. It's official. Pasqualoni's gonna be the scapegoat this year. But yeah, that is all I gotta say for this week for Detroit Lions football. And oh, by the way, when Martha Ford's sending the letter out, remember when I said this fan base was too impatient? Guess what, folks? Martha Ford's letter just proved my argument right when she has to tell you herself for all you to be patient. Congrats, folks, to everyone that commented saying they you can't have patience in that video. Congrats, folks, that have no patience. You just proved me right. Congrats. And no, I take zero joy in being right. This was a time I wanted to be wrong. But once again, you all proved me right. Hell, oh, this even proves that there goes Moby was right when he even said the fan base was too impatient. Like, the letter says it all. It says it all. She even knows this shit takes time. You could rip on Martha Ford all you want and tell her to sell the team all you want. But when she's telling you to be patient and that takes time, then it just proved that my argument was right all along. But yeah, we'll go more into the letter in the week, coming weeks in the off season, And I'll give you my thoughts on what it means. But yeah, that's all I got to say, folks. Hope everyone's a great day and yeah. Peace out and let's embrace the suck for one more week.